You read in the Bible, alright, that after God has made all things, He rested. The rest of God is not from tiredness. God didn't rest on the seventh day because He was tired. Why? The one who sits there does not get tired, neither does he get weary. There is no searching of his strength. As a matter of fact, if you have to create by speaking, does that make you tired? So the rest there is the kind of rest you enter into once there are established structure. Day and night itself has shown a system of oscillation of time. Are you following me? He established the plant, the sea, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. Everything structurally. Then they can function according to the counsel of his wisdom. There are laws governing everything existing. So God does not have to be there to say bird fly. This fish you can swim. Man you can walk. There is an established system for everything to walk on their own. And God can rest. So the kind of rest that God wants us to do now is the rest of entering into the finished works. Because in that reality, there is a natural progression that your life will take. When you get there, you have entered into His rest. One of the quality of time is that time is faithful. Alright? Whether you maximize it or you ignore it, it keeps counting. There is no such thing as, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with this time. I don't know what to do with this season. That's why you don't live your life as it comes. You discern the activity you should be doing. <laughs> Alright? What a season is bringing is what determines the activity and the posture. There are seasons that if you are praying for two hours, you are fine. Alright? But this same year, you are praying for two hours in another season, you are so wrong. Because there are heightened activities around you that if you don't pray more than that, you'll be swept off by the storms. What time brings to manifestation is what is called season. Season can be described as the pregnancy of time. You don't know seasons, you discern them. The reason why some Christians have no meaningful progress all right, is because every year or every season, when God should have changed the structure of your activity, you are faithful in unfaithfulness. In the sense that you keep doing things faithfully without trusting God. Anytime you are approaching a new season in your life, always wait on God for new instruction. Why should you discern seasons? So you can know the activity you should be doing. You discern time so you can change activities, not so you can just live for no sake. In the season of your libation, there must be agitations. Many have passed exams for the season they are in, but they are still in the season. Everyone has opened the door, moved to another class, but they won't move. I love God so much, I'm here. Oh Lord, I love you, I'm here. Oh Lord, I love you, I'm here. You are ignorant, but you love God. Because of the ignorance, you still won't go forward, but your love for God is a constant. Why would you discern the season of planting but reject the season of harvest? Because you feel harvest is so sacred. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm in that season now. I'm not sure. Your, 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 your religious facade, you think these things will lift you? It is wisdom to polarize yourself with what God is doing part time. Wisdom. Ah. Sometimes you feel like you still suffer some more. God is saying you have suffered enough. And you are saying, oh Lord, still want me to suffer some more. There was a season in your life that was your season of making. That regardless of the things you were doing in those seasons, you were still broke. But there's a season that God begins to put in your heart. It's time to break forth. In that season, it is not just about knowing that it's time to break forth. It is about also, there are, there are fruits of instructions. That if you have done them before, they will produce no results. But because you are in the season of breaking forth, you will be able to eat the fruit. So the instructions are ripe. All you have to do is to pluck them. Align yourself with the content. And you begin to see God move. God moves men through instructions. Many just love the instruction of the old seasons. They fail to discern the new. Sometimes you know you are in a season for this. But you also forget 
that just when you are in the season for something, at the same time that the devil will be screaming the opposite. Just when you are in the season for freedom, that's when oppression is going to be more. So don't let your gaze stay off God. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Because if you keep looking at what the enemy is doing, even you will not believe in your freedom. Many had missed it. Though they prayed, but there was a character trait God didn't build in them. Or God didn't succeed in building in them. And they missed it. The answer to your prayer is not an event. It's an opportunity. From today, you will no longer miss your season. Say that amen loud and clear. You will no longer miss God. Say that amen again loud and clear. You will not miss your divine appointments. Everything that God has placed in different seasons for you, you will not miss them. God will open your eyes of understanding. You know what to do part time. You are never confused. As you are preparing for a new phase of your life, instructions come to you. You know what to do. By the instrumentality of God's mercy, you will not miss your season. You will not miss your season. In the name of Jesus, His mercies will preserve you all the days of your life. Now hear me. I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart. Very important prayer point. You will not misbehave. Ah. Some people misbehave at the edge of their breakthrough. Ask Vashti. Alright. Ask her. Those who encouraged her not to dance when the king said dance. Alright. When the king was angry, they all fled. I'm praying for you again from the depth of my heart. You will not misbehave. Pride will not suddenly enter into you. You will not be full of yourself. In the name of Jesus.